Hey there, it's Erin with Time Saving Templates and today I wanted to go over my Handmade Sellers Inventory System, also called Raw Materials Inventory or the High Volume Seller System. And you can get to that by going to my shop, timesavingtemplates.com and it's under Handmade Seller Worksheets or you can go to Handmade Templates by Category Inventory Tracking to see them all. Now let me get into the spreadsheet so I can show you how it works. What this consists of is several different pages which were previously different templates that I have linked together in order to save you time with data entry. Um, the first one is the inventory purchased and this is, could also be a standalone template of just a simple inventory worksheet and this is where you would enter your raw materials. I've added a few for an example here and in the pricing worksheet you would enter your finished item name right here and then you would list out the materials that go into that finished item and you could also give the item an item ID or SKU you would put that right here so for example I'm just gonna put uh, five right here and mother daughter bracelet as an example I'm going to go through an example of uh, a handmade product and then after that, I'm also going to go through an example of how you could use this worksheet for graphic design. Let me show you just a quick example of, of using this for a handmade product. So this would be a mother-daughter charm bracelet. And you could also put a description here. You could insert a picture right here if you wanted. I'm just going to... Uh, I, I've already added in the materials and if you need more space just put your cursor right here and you can drag the column over and I need to put the price of the material and the amount of the material but I have a little shortcut so you don't have to keep going back and forth from the inventory purchase page to see okay it was this price per bracelet because I had bought 10 for that price. I have a formula and it's right here. All that you have to do is copy and paste it. And uh, then it will link back and pull in the price per per one item. So keep that in mind. This is, uh, for example, the clear spacers are pulling in eight cents. And if I look right here, I had bought a package of 100 for $8. So it's eight cents per bead, and uh, so you just have to make sure that the correct quantity that's in the package, so you end up pulling in the right price. And from there, I just enter the amount. So I have one bracelet, I have one mother-daughter charm. I'm using four or five of the spacers, and one infinity bead, and one rondelle. It will automatically add up the total price, taking the price of material times the amount of material in this column, and then I get my total cost of material. The cost of material is all that we need to then go to this page and get the cost of goods sold. So if we sold the item one time, then it would have, well, you need to mark it, the item is made, and then the item is sold. If it will add up our cost of goods sold right here and if it sells twice then it will continue adding up the top it will continue adding up your total cost of goods sold and if you wanted to finish pricing the item you could do so the pricing worksheet also comes as its own template um, but for this one I have it linked to go with the cogs in the inventory you would just enter an hourly rate at the top and that's to help calculate the amount of time that you put into to pay yourself for the time making the item but keep in mind that it's also going to be doubled twice so it's doubled uh, it'll calculate the cost of your time based on how many minutes so you have to enter your time as in minutes and it will double for wholesale and then double again for retail and it will add in the, the listing and transaction fees and I also have one that doesn't include the fees but you also need to enter the standard shipping charge because 
your fees are based on what the customer pays including the price of the item and the price of shipping so this is just set up to add in the highest credit card fee whether it's PayPal or direct check and, and then it will give a final recommended price so that's the rest of the pricing template if you want to go through all those steps to price your items but going back to once you mark the item as sold this is tracking your cogs your cost of goods sold but if you go to the raw materials inventory this will track the actual inventory you have left so just go to data refresh all whenever you add new information to the inventory purchased pricing worksheet or finished inventory then you need to refresh refresh it and then it will pull all of that in so it's showing me these are my raw materials right here these are the total purchased the total price paid the average price per unit so this is a if I continue reordering clear spacers uh, and I have several entries with uh, with different prices then it will give me the average price per unit the amount used in projects the amount sold we need to mark two items made and two items sold for that to work right let me just refresh that okay so yeah your, your materials available are based on the materials that have been used in a project so you always want to make sure the used in project and amount sold are the same I mean unless the amount it hasn't sold yet so it's even if even if the item hasn't sold it's still going to show the materials not available if they've been marked as used in a project and so it's basically saying we have eight Dion uh, bracelets left and we started with ten and we sold two we have one mother-daughter charm left we started with three and we sold two and then we have 90 spacers left because each, uh, each bracelet has five spacers in it so we we actually in selling the two bracelets we sold 10 clear spacers and then if you just go over here it's just a few extra things if you enter a quantity measured by and also all unsold materials so if you have used more items and projects that haven't sold yet then it will show you that number right here so that's it for just the basic overview of how the template works with the handmade product if you again if you'd like to purchase the template it's at timesavingtemplates.com and just go to the handmade seller section or the inventory section and let me go through a couple examples about how you would use this with graphic art art so for example with some graphic art you have to purchase licenses that either allow you to sell or use the art for 500 sales or 1000 sales so even though the item is digital uh, it's still required that you track how many times you've sold an item that contains the graphic art so my recommendation was to consider the graphic art or the fonts that you have to purchase as a raw material so you could enter that here okay so I've just entered a few different examples of the raw materials obviously you'd want to use the more specific name for whatever you're tracking but um, just clip arts and fonts that you may purchase and for the quantity and package I would put if you have a license that only allows you to sell it 500 times then I would go ahead and put your quantity and package as 500 and then I have no idea how much it costs but I'm just gonna say it was $50 price per unit is 10 cents and then another example say you can use it a thousand times but that one costs a hundred and so this can also help you compare the prices and help you determine which one is a better deal but now if you have a font that does not have a license then you really don't have to enter a quantity and package that's usually you know with the digital items you never run out so there's usually not a huge need to track the inventory of them so you could really just leave that as blank if you wanted and you could still enter the price 
um, that you paid for it or you could just put a number in there if you wanted but I don't want to get it confused with the other items where we do have a license that only allows for a certain amount so um, so let's just leave it blank and we'll go through and see an example of how this can work um, okay so I'm just gonna scroll down and use this cell but we're gonna call it graphic art posters with ID 7 and so the material that we used contains one clip art example art example and you do have to type the material exactly the same if you want to be able to use this formula to pull in the price per material um, and then say we used font exa example one and then just copy and paste that or you can type in the uh, okay see I have to put a number in here or it's gonna give that error we could just leave it blank. If you're not using this to price the item, you're just using it to track inventory, you don't have to fill out all this extra information. If you're just looking to track the inventory, you really just need to know which raw materials are going into the finished product. When you enter uh, each material in the price, don't forget you do need to mark the amount of material that is in the item. Because with graphic art, you may be only count that as you know one piece using the font one time and you use it throughout the poster but in order if it counts as one sale then you need to enter the amount of the material and then when you go to the cost of goods sold make sure you're on the right row and enter the number of items made and the number of items sold so we're gonna say this one sold five times and then in the raw materials just click the refresh all now it will update so the clip art example we're saying we have 500 licenses for that and we have sold five posters that contain that clip art so we have 495 available um, we can sell it 495 more times before we uh, use up the license and same with the clip art example two. we for the example font example one where we don't we didn't enter a quantity so it left it blank and it still showed that we sold it five times <clears throat> and it's showing the materials available as a negative five I mean that's okay if you're using it for graphic art and you that might be a faster way to recognize that okay if it's a negative number then it's something I don't have a license for and I don't need to worry about if I'm tracking how much we have left. Now, if you wanted to add SKU numbers or item IDs for the raw material in the inventory purchased, you could put an item ID in the material description or the category. You could use any of these columns for what you wanted. You could add notes that say, you know, I have a license that covers 500 items you could also put the SKU in uh, the material name column and put the material description that what it actually is so if you wanted to just use SKU uh, different SKU numbers uh, for that you could but if you do it that way say that we wanted to use different SKU numbers for the graphic art then you would have to also use the SKU numbers when you enter the material into the finished items you'd have to make sure that you're you, you you're using the right uh, SKU number and you but you could definitely do that if that's how you would prefer to track it and the cogs will just list the item name that you give it and the item ID for the finished product and then if you go to raw materials change the SKU number because you had entered it in that column and even better if you want to say SKU dash clip art example you could do that too that way you see both in the raw materials inventory page now remember it's not going to work unless you update it 
you have to have the same name for it in the inventory purchase and the pricing worksheet because that's what links these raw materials to this finished product and all that we have to do is mark the finished product sold and it will automatically pull those raw materials from your inventory. So there you go. Those are two different ways you could use this worksheet. One for handmade products and another example for using it for graphic art. And hope that was super helpful. If you have any questions about the templates or um, other things that you could change or customize, feel free to send me a message. I'm at timesavingtemplates at gmail.com and check out my website at timesavingtemplates.com. Thanks.